On a Monday, I had just come back from uh, Disney. I took all 17 of my family members to Disney for my wife's 65th birthday. She'll be happy to know that I told you she's 65. <laughs> um, and I was returning calls because I had sworn off the phone while I was in Disney. I was going to be present with my family. And I took a phone call uh, from John Calipari. He asked me what I was doing. Uh, I, he said, hang up, don't move. Uh, Juwan Howard would like to speak to you. So uh, Juwan and I spoke and it was, it was more about the, the, the uh, Juwan was going to be interviewed, I think on a Tuesday. And this was Monday. And we just had a, a, a conversation with, with um, a very comfortable conversation like two basketball coaches and and him being prepared for the interview and um, what would I think about a possibility of, of joining him and um, I've said repeatedly that the first two sentences I, I was like he, he was extremely humble um, and a, like a, a, a guy that you would want to be with February the 3rd at midnight if that makes sense like there are certain people in this profession that you're like okay like I got a, a job to do but my sense was if this could work that this wouldn't be this wouldn't be a job this wouldn't be just taking a position and if it was to work out and it, it, that wasn't promised that day it was just you asked the initial conversation my initial conversation was this guy is going to be a star if it goes his way, whether it's as an NBA head coach or the coach at Michigan. The other thing I picked up is that he loved, he loved his school and that it wouldn't be a job for him if it was to come to be. It would be truly coming back to, to his, you know, his love. His first love is Chicago and then this would be his second love. And then once he did finally get the position, what was your decision process like um, when he did well, my my decision process was on, it was more uh, on him and the uh, the powers that be here uh, because I had been through things with my wife. Uh, we had talked about uh, television. We had talked about the NBA. We had talked about NBA International. What would it be like to go coach in, in Switzerland? Um, but I knew that. A situation in a power five where everybody that's involved in, in Michigan basketball gets up every day with the intent of winning a national championship I knew that was for me so it was now a matter of it wasn't dollars it wasn't titles it wasn't any of that stuff it was just uh, how would they feel here that the people that Juwan had to answer to uh, to, to make this happen I did wake up though. I did wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, I'm I'm being. I woke up in the middle, of the, so that was a Monday, Tuesday he interviews. Wednesday it's word that he's getting the job, and I woke up in the middle of the night on Wednesday, and I said, you know what? I don't really know uh, uh, Juwan Howard. I know he was in the Fab Five, and I know that he was a pros pro, but what do I really know? I went on a. I went on Wikipedia and I read like 27 pages. And here's the things that stood out. He graduated with his class a year after he left early. Okay. Before there were online courses. So this means that, that he's making significant money, right? At 20 years old. And he's studying in hotel rooms and buses and planes to graduate because he promised his grandmother that's my kind of person. And on the very last page, they ask him in an interview, what's one of your treats in life? And he just mentioned watching his sons play basketball. And the fact that he's married over 20 years, that, that was, because I didn't want to be caught in a situation where, like I'm just not a hangout dude, you know? Like I'm not gonna be like, yo, uh, let's go to the club, you know? Like, what the hell am I gonna do at a club, right? <laughs> They'll think I'm a cop. <laughs> so.
since you've, uh, since you've come here, in what ways has he kind of lived up to that initial impression that you got? He's exceeded home? it. Yeah. First of all, he loves Michigan. He flat out loves Michigan. Um, the game against Iowa, the football game against Iowa, he was in the first row behind the defense. He was cheering as if he was an undergrad. And when they came off the field, I don't know if anybody saw this, two or three of those guys came over and gave him a pound because they knew he had their back for, what's a football game, 60 minutes? That He had their back. He loves Michigan. He absolutely loves his family. Right? He's brought family here. That's our number one foundation in this program is that we're going to be family oriented. Easy to say, hard to do. It's easy, but it's, it, it's hard to do. And I'm blown away by the teacher that he is. He loves getting his hands dirty and working, uh, particularly with these big guys. But he works every aspect of this program. I really, I'm, 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 I'm uh, amazed at how he's taken to recruiting, how he engages, like every level of recruiting. You know, whether it's the mentor, the parent, the kid. Um, he's exceeded my expectation. He's a star. He's a star. And you know what? They're not paying me to say that. Mm -hmm. He he is, uh, like, think about it. Michigan has been, right? Mm -hmm. Michigan's a blue blood. No one wants to admit that, but look at the record, right, under John Beeline. Well, this is going up a level because of Juwan Howard. So you're sleeping soundly now. You don't have any, any of those last seconds. No, I've never <laughs> slept soundly. I mean, look, <laughs> this is a, uh, I'm, I'm beat up for, uh, I'm not a great sleeper, but, uh, I am, uh, I can't wait to get up in the morning mm -hmm. because I know that he's putting everything, his heart and soul, blood, sweat and tears into this. So I have to do the same. To, to be honorable to uh, the offer that he made for me to come here. I feel like you've been in this game for a while. Um, Franz Wagner, does he maybe fall under the category of a typical freshman? In what ways is he maybe <laughs> different? <laughs> he's different, man. He is different. I would just suggest that um, if anybody's on the fence, if there are tickets available, get your tickets. You want to see this kid play. He's a guy that you come to practice every day and you leave and you just scratch your head. Uh, to be that age, to be that cerebral, uh, to be that pure. Uh, look, there's no question about it. If he, was, if he was a kid that went to, and you fill in the blank, if he went to, uh, if, if he went to IMG Academy or he went to Mount Verde, he'd have been a McDonald's All-American. Uh, I've read where Juwan has stated that if he was in the United States, he would be a five-star. And there's nothing that he has done on this basketball court. Um, and again, but, but again, the brilliance of Juwan. Juwan recognized that this kid played way longer than most kids, high school seniors, right? He finished his, his playoffs in Germany. Then he went to the uh, 19 and under team. And Juwan was really careful in the, in the early, and I, I hate to say, because I think it's all nonsense, like load management. What does that mean? What does that really mean? But, but in making sure that his legs were fresh when we started on September 24th, um, but there's every day. So I would tell people, you have to see this. Uh, and it's subtle. It's subtle. It's like, how did he know to help def defend there? How did he know to go with the right hand? He, he's, uh, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on him, but he's a rain man. He's a rain man in basketball. He's a savant. Is there, is there anything besides his IQ that maybe stands out? Parts of his game? To me, mm -hmm. to me, passing. Mm -hmm. I think his passing ability is uh, uh, of the highest, of the highest level. He's, he's really wonderful. And his personality. He hasn't had a day where he hasn't greeted you with a smile. Um, a little thing in his eye, you know, like a little kind of letting you know, I got this. I'm good. And he is good. What do you see in Xavier as a leader and what potential in other guys in that area is showing it? Um, I'm, um, 
I'm learning from Xavier. Uh, he's so vocal. And he's, he's a willing listener. I think that really, in a societal way, we've lost a whole group of kids because we've talked to them about communicating. So they think that they can text and that'll be communicating. They think they can talk over you and that's communicating. But one of the, one of the, the skills needed in being a great communicator is that you listen. Uh, X listens. He, he, and he, had, and he, he applies what he's listening, what, you, what he has not just heard you say, but he's listened to what you said and he applies it. I think that he has, um, he has complete respect from his teammates, uh, but he gives respect. That to me is, um, is really special. And I think the relationship with he and Juwan uh, is, is kind of extraordinary. You know, there's not, he, X, none of these guys kind of tiptoed in and said, well, let me, let me see if I can put one foot in and one foot out. He, he, uh, he responded and gravitated to Juwan. And whether it was the conversation about, you can't work out three days, three times a day in the summer. He listened. Um, you know, I had one small conversation with him. I said, you know, every once in a while, it's okay to sprinkle a little honey because he's got the vinegar. You know, he got that. But every once in a while, it's okay to sprinkle in some, some honey. And that day, he did, he did the same thing. He did the same thing. Small thing, like a really small thing. But one of the things that we do to start practice is we run what, what Juwan labels as a discipline run, right? The very first day we gathered, we were gonna go on this discipline run, he said, X, take it. X grabbed Franz, because it was Franz's first day working out. It was after the summer and it was, the school year had started. He grabbed him and I said, he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he, he's up there in terms of, like a point guard has to do more than play inside the lines. A point guard has to run your locker room. He's got to run your bus. He's got to run, and and uh, he can he can do that. Uh, Isaiah is another guy. He's very vocal. And again, like I, I have the utmost respect for Saudi and, and John Beeline and the staff because these young guys that they have are so respectful. Um, that I've been, I've just been blown away by, there's no entitlement. Uh, there's no sideways look and saying, we, yeah, you don't know what we do here. It, it's none of that. Uh, it's very impressive. So I'm wondering, uh, first few weeks of kind of practice under your belt, I'm wondering how maybe responsibilities have kind of been divvied up among the assistants and what maybe has kind of fallen into your play here. Well, we're, we're connected, you know, like this is a connected staff. Uh, uh, and I will only tell you, like Howard Isley and Saudi Washington, they can teach basketball. They're going to be head coaches. I mean, I have a pretty good idea of what, it, what that looks like, but they can really teach. And that's really what we're doing. We're all teaching. You know, it's 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 the same thing about what kind of offense. Well, right now we're 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 skill oriented. We're we're going to teach guys how to play. Um, so, you know, if you if you said, do I have scouting assignments? Yeah, I have scouting assignments. Do I have academic responsibilities with five guys? Yeah, I have academic responsibilities. Do I need to get to know five guys better? Uh, he, he, all of us have that, and uh, I think one of the beauties. And one of the um, the characteristics of Juwan is he, he, he makes us speak up. He wants us to have input. It's not his way is the only way. So we're kind of, you know, every, everybody's hands are in, in everything. Everybody, everybody's hands are in recruiting. Everybody's hands are in scouting. Everybody's hands are in player development. And everybody's hands are in evolving this style of play. Yeah, so uh, you're going to talk about um the input you can you can give, and I know at the beginning you said you're not here to come and make any you know, huge kind of uh, institutional changes or like a big schematic uh, implementations or anything like that. But I was wondering maybe if that's come up at all in the offense or in, in like perhaps if I could run a hypothetical by you, like what if you had like these Michigan players on your staff, like as your players at St. Joe, like running that kind of system. Well, well maybe do you think that would look like with the skill set here? Um. 
I could be glib, uh, but I'm really not feeling glib. But if it was just me and you and I was going to be glib, I would tell you if I had these Michigan players at St. Joe's, I would still be the coach at St. Joe's. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, but I don't want to make light of it. You know? right, like yeah. it that was, it's been traumatic for my family and I. But, um, uh, I think I take an answer you in a different way. I've learned a lot about basketball since I've been with them. All three of them, I've learned. And uh, that to me gets me up in the morning because I want to, but I don't hesitate to say, well, what if? Uh, hey, and if we put in a zone defense, well, wh what if we trap the baseline? That's what I would do. That's how I did it. All, all I wanted to be assured is that I would be heard. I don't have to be listened to. I don't have all the answers, right? But I do, and it's encouraged to discuss and to put it on the table. There's no hesitation. I have no hesitation. I'm not here. To, I'm not here to be a mascot. I'm, I'm not. I'm here. I'm here to help Juwan Howard coach on a Monday night in April. That's dead what I'm about. Because he's going to do that. I just want to be a part of that, making sure that that happens. You've been a really highly regarded and successful head coach for a long time. Is there any awkwardness moving to a number two guy here? Or it doesn't sound like it. It feels like you're comfortable. But, no, I, I mean, I, I uh, there's no, there's no, there are no moments where I'll say, oh man, I really miss this. Mm -hmm. uh, or I, I, I do, I miss, I miss things. But because of the quality of people that I'm with and the direction that we're all going in, uh, no? I'm going to give you a fact. I'm going to give you a fact. I, I don't know how many games I coached, but 24 years times 33, whatever that would work out to, 700 and something. Probably more than that. I've never sat down. And when we, uh, when we secretly scrimmage this week, I'm going to sit down. I don't know what that's like. I'm being dead. I don't know what that's like. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't know what it'll be like against in the exhibition game. I don't know that. I really don't. But I'm not going to overstep my bounds. I'm, I'm, I'm not here. I'm not here about me. I'm here about winning a national championship. Obviously, Coach, it's still like early in the practice season and whatnot. Um, but what excites you most about this group of players just overall? Uh, the work ethic. And then I would say very closely is their uh, IQ. I think their work ethic and their IQ bodes well for how this will evolve. I don't think, what's today's date? The 18th, 17th? 17th. 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 So uh, I don't think this will look the same on November 17th. It can and shouldn't. But it doesn't look like it looked on <coughs> September 17th. So I'm really excited about uh, that, the workload. Uh, and I also am anxious, um, I w I'm anxious to see, um, I'm anxious to see how we deal with disappointment. Because, I mean, I'm, not, I'm going to let you in on just a little secret. All these guys aren't starting. And all these guys aren't playing 35 minutes a game, right? So, but the same is true of the staff. We're going to have to deal with some disappointments along the way, right? We're going, it, it, it's just part of this thing. You don't win every night out, right? Unless you're UConn women. Uh, uh, you, you don't. I'm actually using him as, as my path, you know, because he was my assistant coach. Gino Oriema was my assistant coach when I was a high school coach. And I, I lost track of him for a little while, and then I picked up on his career a little bit a couple years ago. I found out he's done pretty well. <laughs> so if I could follow that path, what was he like? He's exactly, he was exactly what you say. Now, here's, here's what. The kind of smart aleck kind of approach to things. If he knew that there was a kid on, 
on the UConn campus that needed his shirt, he would drive the shirt to that kid. Or probably, he's got so much money now, he would be driven to get the kid his shirt. Uh, uh, he is, man, he's a good dude. He's a really good dude. Really, really. Um, but we, when we were together, we were together 350 days a year because we didn't have children. Neither of us had children at the time. And we just had this, we had this, um, just this synergy that, that hasn't changed. I mean, that was, that was 42 years ago. So he's a good dude. He's done pretty well. Coach, I asked about the, the freshmen and getting them acclimated. You got, you got one guy that's come from another country. The other one great point. committed to a different coach. coach. Yeah, great point. Um, has there been you know, special emphasis on not necessarily those facts, but just getting them you know, comfortable here? I think, you know, like uh, everybody wants to complain about the NCAA, but that rule where you can work with them in the summer mm -hmm. has, has done volumes for Cole. He's been able to get coaching. We've been able to spend time with him. Um, and when when pra when school started, he's not a, he wasn't a freshman right, at right. that point. It, he's still a freshman. He still has ups and downs. Uh, but Jawan's approach to this thing is that there's individual emphasis put on each player. So we all have a way. Like even if you if you you'll notice this. I've never been around a program that did this. Like, when they come out and practice starts, Juwan makes a point of shaking every player's hand. They make a point of shaking everybody's hand. And I think that that's helped Cole kind of breathe a little bit, relax a little bit. Um, you know, it, he really is. It's like the Wizard of Oz. He's not in, Dar he's not in Kansas anymore. Uh, and so there's... I think you make a really good point because you have Franz, who's kind of like taken just, to it, they're their and time. Cole needs to do that same thing. Thanks. But the NCAA needs to be applauded for allowing us to work with these players. Yeah. All right.